we're going to go through an example where we derive a physics-based model and a state-based model that approximates uh, the TC lab temperature response. We'll collect some data and compare the three. So for a state-based model, we have x dot equals a times x plus b times u. And then y, our output, is going to be equal to c times x plus d times u. And for a state-based model, we're just determining these parameters right here. And we want to be able to come up with those either from data or from linearizing a model. In this case, we'll linearize a model. If you'd like to follow along, here's the link. I'll also put that in the description if you'd like the source code. And the very first thing we're going to need to do is to generate some data with our TC lab. If you don't have one, that's okay. Um, I'll have uh, some backup data that you can use here. It will connect and uh, get it from this location. All right, if you'd like to run this though, you come down here to the bottom, select the Git code, and I'll give it to you in raw format. And then what I'll do is just go ahead and start this right now because it takes about 10 minutes to run, and then we'll generate our linearized model and compare the two. So if you run it for the first time, it will run, collect the data, and then it won't uh, run again. It will just use the data file that you had generated. So it's going to do some steps similar to what we've done before. I'll go ahead and minimize these and then just bring this back up. All right. So let's go through and just talk about uh, the model that we're going to be generating here. We had a physics-based model that we generated from prior exercises. And this is an example of a physics-based model based on an energy balance for heater one and for heater two and then for our sen temperature sensor 1 and temperature sensor 2. We had some terms just to simplify the expressions uh, that are right here and, and uh, down here. All right, and then we also had a radiative heat transfer between the two uh, that we also would plug in uh, right here and right there. All right, so what we want to do is take this model and linearize it and get it into state space form so that we can uh, simulate it and do other things with it like model predictive control later. So our state space model will have four states. We'll have the heater temperatures and the sensor temperatures here. And then we have our two inputs here on this side, the two heater values. Now we have all of these coefficients. We have 16 that are right here in this A matrix. We have 8 that are here in the B matrix. And then we already have our C matrix and D matrix given to us. Those are just the output equations. That just says that my first output is right here and my second one is right here. That's just because I have a 1, uh, these 1's right here. Okay, so this is going to be C, and that is going to be D. So the thing that I need to obtain are all of the values that A in the A and B matrix, and we're going to get those by linearizing, by taking the partial derivatives of with respect to each of those variables, and then plugging in the nominal conditions. All right, um, and so these are just the four matrices that we're going to be obtaining. And then what we want to do is um, just evaluate this, simulate it. Let's do the first one. Uh, I have A11 and A12. I'm just going to take the partial derivative of that first energy balance equation with respect to H1. And then it should give us uh, this result right here. Here's the partial derivative with respect to H2. Let's go up and just do that, and then we'll fill in some of these values, uh, I've simplified it here, so you could just you know, create these new matrices. Uh, here are some values that came from estimating the parameters from the physics base fit. And then you just need to fill in these values right here. Okay, and you can use these simplified expressions down here. So it just helps to uh, reduce the amount of code. 
All right, and then the final thing that we'll do is we'll simulate the linear model, the A, B, C, and D. In, these, in this case, I have the M tacked on there to not confuse us like with the area uh, that we use above. All right, and we can do that with Gecko, a Python Gecko package, or we can do that also with the SciPy signal package. We have as well a uh, LSIM that uh, helps us simulate this state space model. All right, uh, let's go back up and just derive uh, these models so we know what to put in for these values so then we can simulate it. So let's just go back up here to the first energy balance equation. Make that just a little bit uh, larger here. All right, and the very first thing I want to do is just move MCCP over onto the other side. So I'm just going to do MCCP, and then that will cancel it. And this is going to be equal to F1. All right, so my derivative is on my left-hand side, and then I want to take the partial derivative, first of all, with respect to TH1. And uh, don't forget about these. We have TH1 and TH2 in both of those as well. All right, so if I take the partial derivative, uh, okay, this one is not dependent on TH1. I have something here, here, and then uh, there, and also down there. All right, uh, so the first partial derivative, I'll just say F with respect to TH, um, it's going to be TH1. Okay, I'll have UA, and then I have plus epsilon sigma A, and then I'll take the partial of T to the fourth H1, so that's going to be T h1 and this will be to the third all right and I plug in the nominal condition sometimes we put a bar over that but that's just going to be a constant all right and then we have the heat transfer to the other device all right so that's going to be uh, I'm going to add in the USAS and by the way I'll Put a negative sign out here just because all of these are negative and then I'll also have the heat transfer uh, to the other device uh, with 4 epsilon sigma all right and then that'll be the area between them the AS and then TH1 and that'll be to the third and okay and then I have divided by M C sub P. All right, there's our very first one. If you do the second one, you'll get the answer that I had down there as well. Let's do one of the others though. That, um, for example, let's do uh, one of these right here. Okay, let's get B one one. All right, so that's going to be um, the partial of this F one. Okay, with respect to Q1. In this case, it's just going to be alpha 1 divided by M C sub P. Okay, I just took the partial, and there's the only term that has Q in it. Uh, so that is going to go as our B11 value. All right, I can go down through, just take the partial with respect to each of the variables and come up with those 16 plus 8, so 24 coefficients. If you don't have that variable in the equation, for example, if I look at um, F1 uh, with respect to, for example, partial TC1, that one is not in the first equation, so that's going to be equal to zero. So most of these values are going to be zero. I only have a few of them that are non-zero. So I just take the partial derivatives 
with respect to each of these equations. This one is going to be after I you know, divide through by m c sub p, similar to what I did before. This one is going to be my f2 equation. All right, and I'll have to do the same thing here. Don't forget to divide by the tau on each of these. The tau value, all right, the tau value is uh, here from the conduction. We don't know some of these terms like exactly delta x or AC or K. So we just lump those into one parameter, which is tau, and we tack those on to the end to approximate the heat conduction between the heater value and the sensor. I should just call that C. And there's going to be a, a small delta X between them. And we're just approximating that with a first order lag with that equation. All right, so in this case, when we have um, F3, uh, that one is going to be, if I take the partial derivative of, with respect to TH1, all right, that's just going to be 1 divided by tau. And if I do it with TC1, then that's negative 1 divided by tau. And then all the other terms are going to be 0. So let's just go down to that third equation down below. All right, so down here we had uh, this equation. This is our F3 equation. And we saw that uh, this right here was going to be 1 divided by tau. And then our this is going to be 0 and 0. And this is negative 1 divided by tau. All right, so you can just fill those in. Uh, you know, don't. Uh, this, similarly, this one's going to be uh, one, one divided by tau, and then right here is going to be zero, and this is going to be negative one divided by tau. All right, so I just did the last two rows for you. You just have to do these right here, and then just the remaining ones here. All right, we're going to plug those in. I'll just um, Oh, and it just finished with the fitting. You can see the physics-based model, how well it fits uh, to the data. So now we have that data available. So when we run this, uh, we want to get come up with the state space state space prediction. Uh, this is a nonlinear model response right here, and we just fit it with uh, Gecko. All right, so let's go in and just add uh, some things to our code. We're going to need the SciPy signal package. And then what we'll do is um, we're going to add some things down here after we estimate the parameters. Okay, those are our estimated parameters. And then we also have some constants as well that came from before. We're going to just create our A, B, C, and D matrices. And then I'll just say that the ambient temperature is going to be T0. That's the point at which we are going to linearize the temperatures. And then I'll define some additional constants that are used over and over again in the derivation of the linear model. All right, so here we have, um, make this just a little bit bigger, uh, C1, C2, C3, C4. So C1 and C2 are the heat transfer to the ambient conditions, and C3 and C4 are heat transfer to the opposite heater. And then we have our mass times the heat capacity, and then we'll have that C6 value, which is 1 divided by tau. And then we start filling in the matrix values. Okay, Python again uses a zero index. So AM11 would be the A2,2 from before. And then I'm just going to fill in all of these values. There are the two rows that I gave you right here, uh, the one divided by tau. And then I'm going to fill in the B values as well. All right, only two B values there. And we have the C values. And uh, we also have D values, but those are just zero. So we can just leave those alone. Okay, Gecko, we're going to create a new Gecko model. 
we'll just say that it's going to be a state space model and it'll return the x, y, and u. x are the states, y are the outputs, and u are the inputs. And we'll have a, b, c, and d. d is going to be none. And then we'll feed in the values for our first input, which is the first heater value, our second input, and then also the time values. So those are the data that we need. And then we'll start to we'll simulate it with a sequential simulator, and we'll solve it. So that's what we need in Gecko to be able to solve and simulate our state space model. We can also do that with <clears throat> SciPy Signal. All right, so we can create a new state space model, A, B, C, and D. We'll give it the time values. And we'll give it the input as well, but we need to stack these two together. So we'll do a vertical stack of the Q1 values and Q2 values. Just transpose the values. And then we'll use LSIM in the signal package to simulate it. It'll return three things at a time, the output Y and our states. And we'll add our, to our plots down below I'm just going to add the gecko um, plots, and, but you could use instead, if you wanted to, you could use the, um, the signal package outputs as well. Okay, so here is the gecko prediction for temperature 1, and here's the gecko prediction for temperature 2. All right, let's go ahead and run this and just see what it comes up with in terms of our linear state space model versus the nonlinear model. I'll run it. It'll use the data file that we just generated. And then uh, what it'll do is uh, fit the physics space model first. Then it'll take all of these parameters right here and uh, calculate the linear model and then we'll be able to see the results in the plot. All right, so the, you can see the plot that we had before. We have the data, which are the red and the blue dots. We have the physics space model, which are the black line and then the orange line. And then we have the linearized model, which are the gray dots and then the purple dots here. So you can see the linear model, we linearized it at these starting values down here. And you can see that it over predicts the temperature a little bit. Uh, the linear model does not include the temperature to the fourth term, which is in the nonlinear model. So the heat transfer is a little bit less and it over predicts it slightly, but overall it's a very good fit. One of the things that we could have done is picked a different linearization point, maybe 50 degrees Celsius, something like that. It would be a better approximation uh, throughout this whole range. All right, so that's it for this um, tutorial. We came up with uh, you know these parameters here for our physics space model. We use those parameters uh, in our linearized model and then simulated all of them together with the data and showed the comparison.